Okay. So uh, the number one myth about actuarial science is that actuarial science is hard. Really? I mean, I find this answer very funny when someone tells me, you know, actuarial science is very hard. It's very demanding. The subject as such or the curriculum as such is just like any other subject. It's just like giving your CFA exams or giving your FRM exams or like giving your CA exams or your ACCA exams. It's, it's just like any other degree. It's like studying for physics. It's like studying for chemistry or it's like studying for any other STEM subject. The curriculum as such is not difficult or hard to ace through. Now, the challenge here is that you have a job which you are doing alongside. That job can be pretty demanding. And studying for your exams while acing through your job is the number one challenge which you will face. Now, here comes your time management skills. You need to manage your time. You need to dedicate some dedicated time to your studies while pursuing a job. So what I mean to say here is that you don't need to study for long hours or the whole night and be an overcommitted person who just thinks about exams. Even if you study for a couple of hours or an hour daily, it should be enough to ace an exam. And I say this with experience, you don't need to compromise with all other things just for the exams. Now, if you think about acing the exam just by studying it in the last one month, that's where your strategy goes wrong. And that's not the subject to blame, then that's your strategy which is to blame. So therefore, you need to do regular study and you should be able to ace the exams through that. So actuarial science, in short, is not tough. And that's your number one myth, which is busted right there. The second myth about actuarial science is that you need to be good with maths. Now, I understand where it comes from that when you are just in high school or just graduating your high school, you don't have enough knowledge about other subjects to let you know exactly where you should be good at to ace a certain career and mathematics therefore becomes the choice because that's the nearest subject. But trust me, if you're not good at maths, it's not necessary that you will not be able to get through your actuarial science curriculum. So it's applied mathematics A and statistics B and C. If you're not going into academia, you will not be performing calculations on your own. There will be software which will be doing it for you. There are programming languages. There is Excel for that. So you don't inherently need to be a genius at mathematics or a genius at statistics to become a good actuary. The thing which you need to be good at is communication. If you can be a good public relations manager, you can be a very good actuary. You need good communication skills. You need good stakeholder management skills. And these are the two skills which are paramount and way more important. Now, the amount of mathematics or statistics which is required to clear your exams is something which is very minimal and very basic and even if you go through refreshes you should be able to ace through it so don't be uh, don't be demotivated that you're not good at mathematics therefore you will not be able to ace through the exams you will be able to do it you will be able to ace through the career and the only thing you need to good at be or the only thing the biggest thing which you need to be good at is your communication if you're good at english if you're good at communicating then you go mate. This is the profession for you. The third myth about actuarial science is exams are everything. Now, I get where it comes from. I understand that your major goal is to clear all the exams, but clearing a lot of exams at a very fast pace takes you nowhere specifically speaking from a career point of view. Now, this is something which I want to address. And this is a major problem that what people try to do is clear a lot of exams in the early stages of career and just ace through it. Now, that might work for some people, but generally speaking, that's not a good practice. Once you have graduated from your high school, if you have 
uh, if you're then getting admission into a graduate degree and after you graduate if you have just three to five exams and a couple of internships in your kitty you are very 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 good to go but if you just have seven exams with no internships for me as an employer i'll always choose other person who 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 has done a couple of internships it doesn't necessarily need to be in your field it can be any internship where you know how to work in a corporate sector and it should be in the finance field speaking broadly it, it should not necessarily be an actuarial internship so any sort of internship actually helps now the focal point while being in a college should be developing your two skills one is your practical tool skills which can be as basic as just knowing excel or knowing excel alongside some programming language like r or python which does give you an edge once you start looking for jobs so the second thing is improving your communication skills and when i mean communication skills i mean communication skills oral as well as written communication skills you will write a lot a lot of reports you will talk to a lot of people so you need these two skills so if you own these two skills alongside having a decent number of exams that's more than enough for you you don't need to be having seven eight or ten exams while you graduate that gives you no edge over anybody else and the kind of work you will be doing and they'll be doing is the same but the person will be able to ace the job better and if you just have exams and no other practical experience or other kind of skill set required at an entry level you will face difficulties with your job then you will subsequently face difficulties while trying to clear exams and in the long run this will backfire so therefore having a right strategy and developing the right skills is what you need to do in the early stages of your career to get a job now i i hear from a lot of people i have x y z number of exams but i am not being employed therefore actuarial science is an overrated career no myth that's not how it works the problem is you just have exams and no other skills to speak for and it's not just about writing down a couple of skills on your cv it's about showing that yes the skills you have written you actually possess that and trust me there is a huge deficit when it comes to entry level job skills people think they are employable but most of them are not and that's the hard truth because of the kind of skill set that they possess and people just clear exams and they're like oh we cleared exam now it's done and dusted that that's not how it works employers are not finding employable candidates employers employees are not finding suitable employers it's a great mismatch and that's the reason for you seeing some people complaining about the profession but if you talk of supply and demand it's actually a greater demand than a supply at a global scale in some markets it might be at par but globally it is still the scenario and if you possess the right skills and if you work towards it in a right way then yes you can be having a very good actuarial career the last myth which i want to bust which are basically two myths basically they go hand in hand are a actuaries only work in insurance and b actuaries is a highly paid job no mate that's uh the both of them are myths now starting with the first one which is easier and faster to get through is that actuaries only work in insurance majority of them do work in insurance but there are a lot of them who work outside insurance in other fields as well i have seen investment actuaries i have seen actuaries working in banks i have seen actuaries working in government roles i have seen actuaries working in data science roles so there are n number of roles in which actuaries can work it's not just insurance and yes they are insurance engineers that's their specialization but that's not the only thing where they work at now that aside the num the the thing which is the number one myth is it's a highly paid job get it into your head straight away and i don't know how better i can put it but actuarial science is just another 
job i repeat actuarial science is just another job specifically when you are at an entry level of your career it's just like any another job you have to grind through it you have to manage your job clear your exams and ace through it until you qualify as an actuary with a substantial amount of experience let's say 10 to 12 years it's not as highly paid a job as you might think and the career progression is almost similar to other professions where some other professions might have a better exponential growth in the early stages of career but once you are qualified with let's say 10 to 12 years of experience you become an invaluable asset and that's where the actual money lies and that's where you start earning pretty good compared to other jobs so it's true that actually is earn pretty high but what you are being told about are the outliers or the people who are qualified with 10 years of post qualification experience that's where the actual money is because you need that kind of experience and in any other kind of job once you have that much amount of experience which amounts to like 15 to 18 years of experience in the actuarial field you do earn money it's 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 given so if you are into this job or if you are into this career just because of money you're choosing a very wrong profession money is there but that's at a very late stage so get it straight into your head for the folks who are in india right now if you think you'll be earning one crore then for the international audience i'll just put down a script what one crore means but if you think that you'll earn that amount of money then sorry mate that's something which you will earn way 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 later you start with three to five lakhs per annum and you might get more in a few consultancies but that's the range where you start from for the folks in us and canada you start with 50 to seventy thousand dollars and for the folks in uk you start somewhere between 30 to 35 now it depends completely on your skills a the the salaries depend completely on your skills and b it depends on the location which you are working and c the rule of thumb is that uh, the earnings of non-life professionals is more than that of life which is more than that of people working in pension and consequently people working in consultancies earn more than the ones working as uh, in local insurers or domestic insurers i'll make a detailed video later on about the salaries in different parts of the world but then yes if you are in this career just because of money then you're in a very wrong career so get your expectation straight it's just like another job it is just like another job so i hope this video was helpful to you and i was able to help you through a few of your questions if you have any more questions you can post it down in the comment section below and i'll get back to you thank you so much and keep following tbd actuarial